Filming for the 2024 Taiga drama Hikaru Kimii has already begun in Kyoto from May 28. As you can imagine from the title, the main character is Murasaki Shikibu. Therefore, we can imagine that the world of the tale of Genji is being depicted. There is no doubt that in 2024 there will be a slight Tales of Genji boom. I encountered the tale of Genji more than 80 years ago. There is a person who was fascinated by this charm and even acquired Japanese nationality as a result. That person is Donald Keane, an American-born Japanese literature researcher and translator. Mr. Keane introduced many Japanese literature overseas, including the tale of Genji. He can be said to be a great benefactor to Japan. 2023 is the 100th anniversary of Keane's birth. In this video, we express our heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Keane, who played an irreplaceable role as a bridge between Japan and the world during his lifetime and trace his accomplishments let's take a closer look at why mr keen even obtained his japanese citizenship Donald Keane is a great Japanese literature researcher and translator. He acquired Japanese nationality in early March 2012 at the age of 89 and lived in Kita Ward, Tokyo. Among his numerous works, one that stands out is his 18-volume history of Japanese literature, which he wrote by himself. He read a tremendous number of ancient and modern literary works in their original text, and completed this work from 1976 to 1997. Mr. Keane has a miraculous masterpiece that precedes this one. This is an anthology of translations of Japanese literature from ancient times to the present day, and served as an opportunity to widely introduce Japanese literature to the world. English translations of all or part of his selected masterpieces are arranged in chronological order and divided into two volumes, classical and modern. Anthology of Japanese Literature Modern Japanese Literature, an anthology, published in New York in 1955 and 1956, respectively, for the English translations. In addition to utilizing existing ones, I also requested new translations from acquaintances and translated them myself. From classics such as Manyoshu and the Tale of Genji to modern works by Yukio Mishima and Osamu Dazai, the lineup is exquisite and attractive, with a well-balanced collection of not only prose works, but also waka, renga, haikai, Chinese poetry, as well as no, kyogen, and jorori. Mr. Keen responded to these evaluations. Thankfully, I didn't make any big mistakes even though I was working at a young age, says. Mr. Keane wrote this anthology for the first time in the summer of 1953, when he studied abroad at Kyoto University Graduate School. This is the period when he lived in Kyoto. Remarkably, he conceived the idea, prepared and edited a huge amount of manuscripts, and completed all the work up to and including negotiations for publication in less than two years before returning to Japan in May 1955. Keen first encountered Japanese literature in 1940. He bought two copies of The Tale of Genji, translated by Arthur Worley, for 49 cents at a bookstore in New York. He says he was hooked. He got excellent grades and skipped a grade. So he entered Columbia University in September 1938 at the age of 16, when World War II began in Europe the following year. People became too scared to read newspapers that only reported on the war situation. At that time, the beauty of the tale of Genji, translated by Oli, captured the young Keen's heart. Afterwards, he attended Ryusaku Sonoda's History of Japanese Intellect class at Columbia University. Just as he was deepening his understanding of Japan, in December 1941, the Japanese military attacked Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, leading to war between Japan and the United States. Shortly thereafter, he learned that there was a naval Japanese language school at the University of California, Berkeley. 
The Japanese language was needed for the war between Japan and the United States. But he heard on the radio that the United States lacked Japanese language personnel, so he wrote a letter requesting admission to the Naval Japanese Language School and was accepted. From the beginning, Mr. Keene's purpose was nothing other than learning Japanese. As Mr. Keene's passion for the Japanese language grew, the footsteps of World War II steadily approached, and the era was engulfed in turbulent waves. Mr. Keene received intensive Japanese language education at the Naval Japanese Language School for 11 months from February 1942 to January 1943. Many of his teachers were of Japanese descent, and the textbook he used was now Naganuma's standard Japanese reader. In addition to Japanese language ranging from introductory level to the reading and writing level of an educated Japanese adult, he also learned cursive in preparation for reading handwriting, which was required for military service. The Japanese-American teachers were dedicated to teaching their students, and the relationships of trust they had with them were unwavering. At this Japanese language school, Mr. Keen learns Japanese at an amazing speed. Eventually, he began working as a military translator and interpreter. His duty in the Navy was to translate seized Japanese documents. The contents of the diary of a Japanese soldier found in it were unbearably moving for him. In his autobiography, Mr. Keen wrote that the writers of these diaries were the first Japanese he really met and that these diaries looks back on it as being a valuable element in becoming a Japanese researcher. After his graduation, Mr. Keene served as a naval intelligence officer at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. He served in Attu, Kiska, Adak, the Philippines, Okinawa, and Guam. He was engaged in translating documents related to the Japanese military, reading diaries left behind by Japanese soldiers and interrogating and interpreting Japanese prisoners of war. Mr. Keen, who has met Japanese people he can trust in the classroom, does not have any hatred towards Japanese people even on the battlefield. He says that from his diary he could deeply read the feelings of the Japanese people. One of his later masterpieces is Hundred Generations of Passers, which interprets a vast amount of diary literature from ancient times and modern times. Keen's interest in diary literature stems from his experiences on the battlefield. Happily, the war ended in August 1945, sooner than Mr. Keen had expected. Keen said that all the Japanese people he met when he visited Japan after the war treated him kindly. I never felt even the slightest bit of hatred that Japanese people had for Americans, or Americans for Japanese people. Only four months or so had passed since the end of the bitter war. How is it possible for people's feelings to change so quickly? I was wondering, maybe friendship is a normal feeling between humans, and war is just an aberration. It was this spirit of friendship that Keen cherished and continued to nurture throughout his life. Keen will return to Columbia University to study Japanese literature. In graduate school, in the fall of 47 he moved to Harvard University, and in the fall of 48 he began his studies at the University of Cambridge in England. In 1951, he received a doctorate from Columbia University for his research on the Jorori of Manzaman Chikamatsu. He finally went to Japan from 1945 to 1952. Japan was under occupation by the Allied General Headquarters and did not accept international students. It was only after Japan regained its sovereignty through the San Francisco Peace Treaty in 1951 that my long-cherished desire to study in Japan became a reality. After receiving a scholarship, he was able to study abroad in the ancient capital of Kyoto in the summer of 1953, a dream of his dreams. Mr. Keen lived in a purely Japanese-style room in a private house in Imakumano, Higashiyama Ward, Kyoto City. It was surrounded by cherry blossom and maple trees, and the sound of a murmuring stream could be heard coming from the valley in front of it. He wanted to live an old-fashioned Japanese life, and even in the cold winters. He kept warm with a brazier instead of using a stove. He had his wife, Ayako Okumura, prepare Japanese food for him, and he set up a small 
low writing desk in his tatami floored study and sat straight at the desk. It was at this writing desk that the enormous amount of English text typed for the aforementioned edition of Anthology of Japanese Literature was typed. Keen returned to Japan in May 1955 and published her classic edition, Anthology of Japanese Literature, in September of that year. It was published with the agreement that if the 2000 copies of the first edition went unsold, the Japan Society, an American exchange organization for Japan, would buy them. The first edition sold out by Christmas. I decided to repeat the edition. This is because, unexpectedly, around this time, Americans who had more opportunities to experience Japan after the war and occupation began to develop a deep interest in Japanese culture. Even after becoming a professor of Japanese literature at Columbia University, Mr. Keen frequently visited Japan. She became friends with many famous Japanese writers such as Yasunari Kawabata and Yukio Mishima. She translated numerous works from the classical Japanese performing art no to modern literature, and introduced Japanese literature to a wide range of people around the world. He also wrote many books on Japanese literature and history, some of which are still used as teaching materials at universities. In 1985, Keen became the first foreigner to win the Yomiuri Literature Prize. In 2008, she became one of the few foreigners awarded the Order of Culture by the Japanese government. In this way, Mr. Keen introduced a wide range of Japanese culture and history to the American people. He deepened Americans' understanding of Japan and strengthened the bonds between the two peoples. She has carved out a role for herself as a relatable and respected American in the Japanese literary world, communicating that Americans enjoy and understand Japanese culture, and promoting international interest in Japanese literature. It also increased interest, in 2006, half a century after the publication of the anthology, a 50th anniversary celebration was held at Columbia University. People who are engaged in the education, research, and translation of Japanese literature from all over the world gather together. He said that it was through this anthology that he first encountered Japanese literature. Mr. Keen recalled the joy he felt. In addition to researching and translating his literary works, Mr. Keen broke new ground with his critical biography of Emperor Meiji, published in 2001 at the age of 79. This is a large book with over 1,000 pages in total. Even though the emperor declared humanity after Japan's defeat in the war in 1945, there had been no biography in Japan that depicted Emperor Meiji as a human being. Keen calmly writes about the life of a man with an international sensibility who fulfilled the role of God in a careful manner based on a vast amount of material. After this, in 2007, he created the late Edo period painter Watanabe Kazan, and in 2012, he created Masaoka Shiki and Ishikawa Takuboku, two of the reformers of modern Japanese short poem literature after becoming naturalized Japanese. Both were published in 2016 and became a hot topic. Donald Keane moved to Japan in 2012, the year after the Great East Japan earthquake, and acquired Japanese nationality. He also revealed his kanji name, Keane Donald, which made him Japanese. He encouraged the Japanese people who were suffering from the earthquake and nuclear accident. Mr. Keane I was impressed by how calm the Japanese people were even after the earthquake tsunami and nuclear accident i like japanese people i want to die as a japanese person commented professor charles inoue of tufts university in the united states is a japanese literature researcher who had an intimate email exchange with mr keen during his final years according to professor inoue what mr keen particularly emphasized was peace in japan in Mr. Keen's eyes, the recent situation in Japan seemed to be undermining the peace that had been built after the war. Furthermore, even as discussions began to revise the constitution, I was disappointed by Japan's lack of interest in history and peace. It's called Mr. Keen My Thoughts on the Constitution and the Olympics were published in a newspaper. But so far only two people have responded. 
a former newspaper reporter I know and a student. No miracle happened. I don't want Japan to experience the pain of war ever again. If war happens again, it will be the end of the story. It seems that he sent an email. Professor Inoue Mr. Keen cared deeply about the war. It was painful to see Japan, which prospered after the war, gradually forget the lessons of the war. Is Paul, like this professor news testimony revealed that there was another aspect to acquiring natural citizenship. Mr. Keen confessed to Professor Inoue that he wanted to convey his message with determination, not as a foreigner, but as a Japanese person. Professor Inoue Mr. Keen has always talked about the good things about Japan, but now I have to say a little more about the bad things. But, as an American, it's hard for me to say that I can't do it. He didn't want to criticize his beloved Japan as a foreigner, but rather as a Japanese person. But, Keen replies, like you said, I wish I could do it better to convey the message. My concern is that Japanese people only tell me how much I love Japan. They don't listen. I think this comment clearly illustrates Mr. Keen's inner conflict in his later years. Donald Keen who loved Japan, understood the Japanese people, and brought Japan's wonderful culture to the world, passed away on the morning of February 24, 2019, at a hospital in Tokyo due to heart failure. He passed away at the age of 96. He concludes his talk by expressing his heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Keen, who has played an irreplaceable role as a bridge between Japan and the world. If you think this video is pretty good, please like and subscribe to the channel. See you again in the next video. Thank you for visiting.